Hey everyone, welcome. With iOS 8 out the door and many of you getting iPhone 6 and 6 Plus today or in the next few weeks, I thought I'd share some of my favorite iOS 8 tips and tricks. So in no particular order, let's go ahead and jump right in. The first one actually has to do with Apple's new health kit. And this has actually been a long requested feature um, of just being able to identify any medical issues you may have if you're incapacitated or unconscious. If your phone's locked, well, there's no way for a medical person to know your passcode or get in. But now with HealthKit, they've added something that's kind of hidden that allows people to see any medical card information you want them to see, even if your phone is locked. Let's take a look. So I'm going to go ahead and swipe over on my iPhone, and I'm going to go into the new HealthKit. And when I go to HealthKit, I can go to the brand new option in the bottom right-hand corner that says Medical ID. And from there, I can add in. I can edit this. I can add in any information I want, blood type, height, weight, any medications I'm on, allergies, reactions, and more importantly, an emergency contact. Once you're done and you've created that card, once your phone is locked, so all they have to do, here I'll lock my phone so you can see it. I used to actually have a, um, a, a screen that would actually have my, or a um, wallpaper screen that would have my medical information on it, but now I don't need it. If they swipe to unlock your phone, here, let's do this again. If they swipe to unlock your phone, there we go, and your phone is locked with a passcode, all they have to do is hit emergency. And when they hit emergency, now you have a new option in the lower left-hand corner that says medical ID. So they'll be able to display your medical ID without accessing the rest of your information and see any of that information that's listed. So I think that's a pretty cool feature and highly uh, over, overdue and important. So let's go ahead and go to the next one. The next one I'll actually show you on the iPad itself. So let's uh, cancel out of the emergency here. Let's jump into or jump back into the iPhone, and then we'll switch over to the iPad. In the iPad, I'm gonna go ahead and double tap to get to my um, Safari browser. And now that I'm in Safari, uh, both on iPhone and iPad, you can now have third-party extensions, which this is gonna be really cool for people that have apps that can now take advantage of things you're doing in your web browsing. For example, my password manager is uh, 1Password. So now, if I go in and I tap the share button in the upper right hand corner, I can get to the standard sharing options, but now there's a more category. And when I go to more, this will show me any third party apps that are installed that take advantage of iOS 8, they can be turned on as an extension. So now when I'm in Safari and I go to a website that requires a password, I don't have to bounce out of Safari and go to 1Password to look it up. I can actually look it up while I'm in Safari. So you'll see all kinds of extensions coming for those uh, for the Safari from those various apps that would be able to take advantage of it. So that's adding extensions to Safari. While we're at it, adding things to the control or it's to the um, control center. So if I swipe down, here's the control center, and it's got um, you know the various. Uh, things that you would have here, such as the current time and day and weather and all those things. But now if you go ahead and tap edit, a new option at the bottom, any third-party apps that you have uh, that take advantage or add widgets to the control center can now be added. So for example, if I want to do Evernote, if I want to do Dropbox, if I want to do Open Table, if I want to do the New York Times and um, LinkedIn. So now when I hit done, those options are there. So for example, if I want to see, um, if I want to create a quick Evernote, I can do that right from the control center. If I had a reservation from open table, that reservation would be there. Uh, the last few things I've uploaded to Dropbox are there. So I don't know how useful that one is. I might turn that one off. Uh, let's go back and turn Dropbox off for now. Um, but let, let's go on. And for example, um, anyone who's viewed me once I sign in to uh, LinkedIn would show there as well. So once I launch any of these apps, they would automatically update and then be available uh, with the most recent information right here in the control center. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and bounce out of this. Let's go back to the home. And now let's pick up the iPhone. And on the iPhone, what I'm gonna do is go to settings. I'm gonna go to general. And I'm going to go to Siri because now there's a new option that says allow Hey Siri and it's off by default. Once you turn that on, 
if your iPhone is plugged in, now you can just say, and here we'll do it, hey Siri, did the Falcons win? Concerned over the Buccaneers by a score of 56 to 14 yesterday. So that's the cool part. As long as your phone is plugged in, which typically isn't when you're in a car or you're sitting at your desk, you don't have to pick up your phone and hold the button down. You can just say the words. <laughs> hey Siri, what time is it? It's 9.32 a.m. Good morning. And Siri will jump in and start answering your questions. So that's the cool part about what's going on with uh, the new, hey, you know the word uh, option. I just don't want to bring her up. All right, so next, let's go ahead and jump into uh, Apple Mail. I'll do this on the iPad. And now with Mail, uh, you'll see here, we'll go ahead and scroll up. We'll see our most uh, recent emails. There we go at the top. And, um, and as you know, in the past, you could swipe to um, trash a message. Now, if you go all the way over, it just trashes it immediately without you having to tap a button or do anything. But what people often miss is that now there's a new option in iOS 8 to swipe to the right. So you can mark a message as read without having to actually touch it or tap on it that you actually read it. And again, if you want to get rid of it, you can get rid of it. If you just want to bring the menu up, you can bring the menu up because you also now have the flag option here as well. So you can go in and just quickly and easily uh, flag emails and there we go. So that is uh, just a quick look at the mail swiping. Um, let's go ahead and jump back to the iPhone where we have messages. And of course we have messages on the iPad as well, but now messages takes on a whole new thing with adding easy voice and, um, and video messages. Now the voice icon, that's the easy one. That's the microphone at the bottom. People will often easily see that, but what people don't realize is that the camera, which typically you would just tap it and go select the picture. If you hold it down, you can actually record a video message. So the video message will record, you could play it back, uh, we can go ahead and close it, or just if we hit the up arrow, it would actually send it. There's no attaching it and then hitting send, it's instant. So it's like video messaging or voice messaging back and forth. So there we go. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into, um, while we're here, um, you notice there's a new details button in the upper right hand corner. And this is one of my favorite new features in iOS 8. As you text message or, or message people, I message people back and forth with attachments, you know, those conversations could go on for weeks or months. And those attachments typically in the past would just stay there chewing up more and more space. Now, without having to scroll through the whole conversation for months on end, you can actually uh, get to all the attachments that were ever sent and delete them. So for example, if I go to details, it will show me at the very bottom, every attachment that this conversation has in it. If I hold my finger down on any one attachment, then I get the more option. And from there, I can go ahead and just tap all the attachments I want. I do wish there was a select all, but I can go ahead and tap all the attachments I want and hit delete and that will delete all the attachments, freeing up that space off my phone without me having to go back through every message and find an attachment, delete it, find an attachment, delete it. I can do them all in one spot. So deleting, um, deleting the message attachments is awesome. Now let's do one more. Let's, we've already, already on number eight. Let's go ahead and go to photos. And here in photos, this is typically where you would share your photos. And of course, uh, iOS 7 on down has always given you the options that were available to you. Well, there's a couple new things here. First of all, you can now go to more because Apple's freeing this up finally where you can add third party applications that support iOS 8 so that they're there to go ahead and quickly add a picture. So if I want to add a picture to uh, Snapchat and LinkedIn, those options would be there. That's cool. But more importantly, here's the one that people are going to miss is that now, just like the icons on your desktop, these icons can be rearranged. So for example, if I just hold down on the, on the share with iCloud photo sharing, because I don't really use that one that much, I can go and swipe it over and say, you know what, let's stick that one over there, because I, you know, I use Facebook and Twitter the most 
aside from messages and email. Let's put those up front so I get to those. Uh, same thing down here, if you wanna rearrange these because you're always printing your images, you're hardly ever using them as wallpaper, you can go ahead and do that. And the same thing here, uh, you can rearrange these in the order you want them in as well. So rearranging or customizing your share sheets now in iOS 8. So that was it, that was quick eight tips and tricks for iOS 8. Hope you enjoyed them and we'll catch you on the next one. Maybe I'll do more, more than eight or more iOS 8 tips and tricks in the next video. Uh, thanks again for watching and head over to bestappsite.com for the best apps for your new iOS devices. Uh, take care and we'll catch you on the next one.